Hello, everybody. Welcome to itglobal.com. Uh, my name is Oleg Arseniev, uh, and uh, I'm responsible for international business development uh, in IT Global. Uh, today we have a webinar session dedicated to uh, one business challenge that we have this year, uh, how to scale IT infrastructure during uh, global chip uh, shortage. Um, so we will talk about uh, actual situation. We are in uh, the end of 2021 uh, with all the situation uh, in the world, you know. So, and uh, probably it will be interesting for uh, all of us to uh, talk uh, what challenges do we have uh, and what can be the solution for the challenges. Uh, but before we start, I would like to say some words uh, about our uh, company, who we are, uh, what we are doing. Uh, so, uh, itglobal.com is an international group of companies. Uh, we provide uh, cloud solutions. Uh, uh, we provide uh, uh, IT services. Also, we develop IT software for telecommunications, for IT uh, service um, uh, management, as well for um, virtualization. And uh, actually, we, since uh, 2008, uh, we are working in IT sphere. Or we uh, provide the cloud solutions, and uh, uh, we were one of the first partners of uh, VMware in the world. At the moment, we have cloud infrastructure in uh, uh, five data centers, uh, very reliable data centers, tier three, uh, in uh, different locations uh, in different continents, uh, serving country, uh, serving customers uh, in uh, different customers. At the moment, we have more than one thousand enterprise customers, um, and uh, uh, more than three hundred. Uh, employees worldwide. Uh, actually, we maintain a highly experienced team of experts. Uh, some of them are with us since from the, the very beginning, and uh, it helps us to deliver um, IT services with very high quality to our customers. Um, so here uh, you can see the uh, uh, list of our data centers where we have collocations for our equipment, where we provide our cloud services. So we have a uh, location in Amsterdam, in New Jersey, in Moscow, Almaty, and Minsk. As well, we have two data centers coming soon in the next months. And uh, actually, the intention is to grow uh, more and more internationally. And uh, uh, I would like to mention that all our data centers and infrastructure uh, we are using is uh, uh, very reliable. Uh, that satisfies uh, all uh, international certifications and also regional and local certification like uh, TIA3, PCI DSS and others. Um, and today, the main focus uh, I would like to uh, touch is uh, about the crisis that we have an IT market uh, this year. Um, so last year, so we uh, were faced with the pandemic of COVID-19. Uh, uh, and in parallel, we had uh, like two big issues. Uh, it's uh, a global uh, shortage in uh, uh, microchip market, uh, also logistic crisis and uh, USA China trade conflicts. Uh, you know, so partially microchip, uh, partially the uh, shortage um, was due to uh, logistics issues, also with the production issues due to lockdown. And as well, there were some uh, uh, fire incidents on the factories in China. So uh, all these together with increasing demand for digital services, also due to lockdown and uh, isolation that we had worldwide, uh, created the uh, shortage of uh, IT components, in not only in uh, uh, hardware industry, but also in all the markets, uh, probably, you know, that we even uh, car industry is suffering a lot um, of this uh, issue. And probably if you purchased equipment, IT equipment this year, you also uh, found that the delivery time and the pricing uh, changed, significantly changed. For example, in our experience, we're purchasing a lot uh, regularly, and uh, we are one of the uh, like biggest partners of uh, uh, international 
uh, vendors and uh, even our delivery time increased from regular six, uh, eight weeks to three, six months. And uh, for some uh, uh, items even more and in all the locations we are working on. Uh, moreover, we understand that uh, our customers who do not purchase this amount of equipment, they were affected even more. Uh, so, but uh, here's the problem. So usually each customer has its own project, uh, projects, his plans, budgets, and uh, they are not purchasing equipment, uh, IT equipment, uh, like two years in advance. Uh, that is why <clears throat> they were faced with the issue, with the problem, with the challenge that they have a um, a project a task, uh, but they cannot uh, resolve it uh, because there is no IT equipment uh, in place. And what can be the solution here? So uh, the logical solution probably is uh, cloud services. So you can uh, totally or partially migrate your infrastructure or develop your new projects in cloud environment um, and grow your infrastructure by integration of these uh, external cloud resources. But here we have uh, another question, how to uh, select uh, the right approach because there are a lot of cloud solutions, a lot of cloud providers and how to, try, how to identify uh, the best solution that fits you well uh, according to your needs and uh, uh, technical requirements and budget expectations. And here, I think we should try to classify cloud services in general. Uh, so we propose this kind of uh, classification uh, based on uh, uh, like four different uh, uh, like uh, levels. So first by type of service. So it uh, can be classified in E infrastructure as a service. Uh, it's uh, when you have to, when uh, you get the access to uh, virtualization interface, and then you can manage by yourself your virtual machines. You can create them, you can delete, install some software, uh, etc. So you can make template snapshots uh, and actually manage all this uh, virtual equipment. Another uh, type is uh, platform as a service like PaaS. And uh, it means that based on the top of uh, infrastructure as a service, there is some additional software, uh, additional platform like SQL, Kubernetes, and you can use your software on this platform. In this case, you rent not just infrastructure, uh, you acquire platform as a service. Uh, the next step is uh, uh, software as a service. It's when you receive already a software platform ready for uh, your needs. It can be financial system, CRM system, uh, etc. And in this case, you don't need any administration. You just uh, manage it, you know, create users, make some transactions, etc., etc. So you are using it like a um, uh, like finished product, uh, final product. Uh, today, we will, we will be focusing more in uh, uh, infrastructure as a service and platform as a server. Uh, and that is why uh, we have some other classification. Uh, another one is by provider. Probably you know that uh, there are some big international players like uh, Amazon, like uh, Microsoft, Azure, uh, like Alibaba, etc. Uh, so we call them hyperscalers. Uh, they provide typified services and there are a lot of these services and probably some of them uh, may fit you. Also, uh, there is another type of providers. We call them uh, locals. Uh, and usually there are some local cloud providers and they have uh, their more special service and uh, uh, it's more exclusive, I would say. Uh, that is why we like separate them um, to like another uh, class. And actually we also belong to these type of uh, providers. And uh, then we go to price and quality uh, classification. And here uh, we should like separate enterprise uh, solution and low cost solution. Um, actually, uh, for all types, uh, probably you can find uh, the customer. And but the difference is that enterprise provide you a better quality, but uh, 
as well, uh, the cost, the price will be higher. And uh, low cost providers, uh, they have their uh, service with uh, some uh, regular quality uh, and it can satisfy some tasks of uh, the company. You just need to understand uh, what kind of tasks you are going to um, uh, resolve with the cloud solution and uh, what are the risks and uh, uh, what are the benefits and the <clears throat> service level you are expecting. Another type uh, of uh, uh, classification is by isolation level. And here we have public cloud and the private cloud. Um, and the uh, public cloud is uh, uh, when the resources are uh, shared between different uh, customers uh, in one uh, environment in the private cloud when the resources are dedicated. And actually what we consider an option to resolve business challenge with the uh, uh, cheap, uh, global chip shortage is uh, uh, the enterprise uh, private cloud from a local provider, uh, infrastructure as a service or platform as a service. And uh, here important to mention that um, there is no bad solutions uh, among uh, all the options that we mentioned here. Each service has its customer and uh, uh, each service can resolve some tasks. But if we are talking uh, about <clears throat> um, on-premise solution uh, and we need to find a way to uh, come closer to uh, substitute it or even to make it more efficient and better, uh, we probably need to uh, focus on uh, enterprise private cloud. Um, then, uh, I would like to share some uh, information about architecture that we are using in our infrastructure. Here's the uh, architecture of enterprise level uh, solution. Uh, each component has a redundancy uh, and uh, actually to be enterprise solution, it's important to have, to have enough computing server resources. So uh, at least N plus one architecture, uh, uh, we need to maintain at least one server shall be <clears throat> like for reserve and network equipment as well shall be duplicated and uh, as well placed in different physical racks. Uh, storage uh, as well uh, cannot be like a single point of failure, so cannot have any points, uh, single points of failure. So controllers uh, should be duplicated. Uh, all the hard disks should be uh, in proper rate arrays. So in total, uh, when we talk about enterprise and uh, when we explain why the cost is higher, uh, we uh, need to understand that enterprise means high efficient infrastructure without any single point of failure. All components are duplicated. And also I would like to mention FlexPod. It's a special solution from industry leaders based on NetApp storage, Cisco uh, UCS servers and uh, VMware. And um, we uh, uh, consider that in our experience, uh, FlexPod is the ideal solution for uh, if we want to rent uh, or build uh, our own cloud or uh, and if you require fault uh, tolerance. Uh, as well, I would like to mention that uh, the equipment that we are using is uh, uh, from industry leaders like uh, Cisco NetApp and uh, virtualization we are using is VMware and uh, uh, Veeam for uh, <coughs> uh, disaster recovery and backups. Okay, so let's move and actually to uh, talk about uh, more um, classification of different uh, cloud solution. And uh, I would like to start with public cloud or classical infrastructure as a service. Uh, so it's built in, uh, built using uh, virtualization, for example, VMware uh, and the high-end class software. So as I mentioned, we are using Cisco UCS servers and NetApp storage system. All clients are hosted on common hardware. Virtual machines are distributed across one or more virtualization server clusters. Storage is shared between usage, between users. Uh, in network equipment is also shared. <clears throat> Computer and resources are only partially guaranteed or not guaranteed at all. 
the performance of the disk subsystem is limited by the level of individual disks for virtual machines. Um, managing virtual machines and their networks are via interface of VMware Cloud Director or via its uh, API. Uh, clients in this case have unique cloud director links. Uh, virtual machines are isolated by means of uh, a hypervisor. And in terms of the network, they are uh, separated by an overlay, uh, VXLN or GNIF. Uh, usually it's ideal for projects that require high availability, easy scalability and flexible pricing. Um, so it is most often used by retail companies, uh, also by uh, SaaS providers and uh, by some IT companies because it's actually ideal for testing and development environment. So if in organization you have some software and development team, so probably it can be the solution because it's uh, really flexible and uh, uh, cost efficient. Uh, but unfortunately, due to some uh, limitations and sharing usage of uh, uh, resources, uh, it cannot guarantee you some uh, reliability and uh, uh, business continuity. And then uh, that's why we go to another option is private cloud uh, with management by VMware Cloud Director. Uh, actually, it's uh, the most customized solution where you can implement uh, actually any customer requirement. Uh, it has different level of uh, isolations depending on the task. And uh, this one uh, is um, um, the minimum option of uh, private cloud. And uh, actually it's the most frequent one. So it's the most uh, frequently used by our customers. It looks uh, similar to a classic uh, infrastructure as a service to public cloud, but the client is provided with a cluster of service completely dedicated only for him. So in this case, the client's virtual machines do not compete for CPU and the RAM resources uh, with the virtual machines of uh, other customers. Uh, data storage is uh, still shared, but separate volumes are allocated for the client with the policies that guarantee a certain level of service in terms of performance. The network equipment is shared as well, and overlay is used for isolation uh, at the network level. Usually it's ideal for projects that require high availability and fault tolerance and have special requirements for oversubscribing of virtual CPUs or for companies uh, whose um, uh, information security service or due to some uh, regulations <clears throat> from the government uh, or from some authorities uh, doesn't allow hosting on service with other clients. Uh, and uh, this solution implies a predictable exact amount of resource rent for budgeting. So it's also quite um, uh, uh, convenient uh, for the budgeting purposes. Let's move on with the next option. Uh, it's private cloud with dedicated VMware vCenter. It's similar to the previous one, but the client is granted uh, with access to a dedicated vCenter server. Uh, and uh, sometimes it is required by company security, uh, IT security service. Uh, optionally, then you can deploy the VMware vCloud director panel on top of the dedicated vCenter. Uh, and uh, this type of the solution is suitable for companies that use automation tools via vCenter server API, uh, for example, in Cybel or Terraform. The next one is uh, a private cloud uh, with dedicated storage. Uh, here, the cloud has an additional dedicated element, data storage system. Uh, the client is also hosted on a server cluster completely dedicated only to him. The server, the client has a dedicated vCenter. And also the customer has a fully dedicated data storage system. In this case, the impact of other customers uh, is excluded and uh, other customers cannot affect uh, on the load of the customer. Uh, it is required for projects with uh, uh, special IOPS consumption characteristics uh, when you have large peaks in loads, as well as for customers whose information security uh, service or regulatory authorities do not allow sterling data on the same storage with other companies. Uh, and uh, when 
uh, you use this kind of solution, other customers cannot affect uh, the power and the load of your CPU uh, memory, disk subsystem, and uh, IOPS under any circumstances. So it is really a totally dedicated solution. But it's not the most dedicated possible because uh, another option is actually the most uh, expensive and the most customized and uh, most isolated as possible. So the customer sometimes require uh, to be located in separate tracks. So uh, he's not, he, he don't want to share not only uh, virtual infrastructure, but even physical infrastructure. He want to be totally separated on a dedicated server cluster with its own vCenter on a separate storage and dedicated network equipment. Uh, RECs can be located in a separate cage machine room or on the client side. So it's suitable to those customers who for some reasons usually can be requirements of uh, information security or as well like some regulating authorities. For these reasons, they don't have, do not have the ability to be hosted in the clouds. Um, but also they're not ready to invest in equipment uh, at the moment. So they do not want to maintain a stuff for their engineering services for the equipment and hypervisor, uh, but also they need uh, to have a support 24 seven. Or as well, it happens when the customer is not sure about long-term viability of his project. So they do not want to invest because they are not uh, committing to long-term um, um, like necessity of this equipment of this project. So uh, they don't want to have capital expenses in this, uh, in this project. So let's move on. <clears throat> and uh, uh, here I would like to mention some uh, general advantages of uh, private cloud. So usually customers <clears throat> uh, who are waiting for the equipment as it may happen now. So if you are in this situation, so please, uh, you can contact and we can help you to resolve uh, your tasks immediately. Uh, so they have, they are suffering from the delays, such customers, uh, but they already have the infrastructure and the, probably they already purchase uh, some equipment and now are waiting not for one device, but for different uh, items like various servers, storage system can be two, three, five, ten, 10, uh, and even more. Uh, and it's complicated for them to extend quickly by uh, public cloud services. Uh, as well, they need some urgent solution uh, because the timing uh, is critical. Uh, the project probably is planned. There are some marketing activities or there are some products are coming and they need to have IT infrastructure ready. And also they uh, usually need isolated infrastructure. And uh, as well, they may have some security requirements. Uh, also, sometimes uh, our customers already have some pre-designed infrastructure and uh, they have very specific customization to, uh, to, be, uh, to be done uh, to uh, connect to uh, their own infrastructure. In this case, uh, we propose like hybrid solution. And uh, in this case, there is no need for the customer to invest uh, into uh, this infrastructure and quite quickly, uh, the customer can implement uh, his solution with uh, a private uh, cloud. So, uh, but here come spend cloud infrastructure if you already have something uh, by your own. And, um, the thing is that uh, even if your virtualization is not uh, in uh, VMware, so it's not a big uh, problem. So you can uh, use um, the resources. Uh, so we can um, try to analyze um, your infrastructure and find the right uh, solution. So it's not a problem, it can be mixed between different virtualization. Also, uh, some of the customers already have their infrastructure on premise, and also they have the same uh, uh, assumption that uh, it's complicated or it's not possible to do with uh, virtualization uh, and with uh, some cloud services. 
it's also not very correct. So all this option can be extended uh, with private cloud and uh, VMware solution, VMware software uh, will work well for you. Um, so uh, VMware has a, a perfect solution for uh, mobility of your virtual resources here. And there are two uh, ways of integration of new cloud infrastructure. If you already have a VMware locally or with cloud providers, so on the left, uh, you can see that uh, uh, you can use cloud availability uh, service. It's uh, one of the uh, VMware uh, platforms and it is based on vCloud replication. And it allows easily configure scripts of migration or scripts of disaster recovery between different sites, including on premise in the cloud environments. As well, if you are familiar with WinWare interface, it's easy for you to work uh, with this uh, platform because it's actually the same uh, WinWare. Another option is uh, uh, when virtualization is different uh, in custom environment or other cloud provider uh, is used or on-premise solution. And uh, in this case, it's also quite typical. Uh, so as I mentioned, some customers have doubts that uh, it will not work. Uh, but you should remember that virtualization in general is just uh, a tool to organize your IT infrastructure and uh, services. So if we know what kind of service uh, you are doing, how it's working, we can help to design a highly available IT solution uh, when different parts of your infrastructure is uh, uh, located in uh, uh, various uh, sites and uh, it works together as a single whole. The most important here is to design network infrastructure to connect all the components um, distributed. And if the customer uh, doesn't have enough knowledge and experience, we also can help with this design. Uh, we have very experienced engineers who can be who can do that. And also we can help uh, to design disaster plans, uh, etc. As well, we have our managed IT service and uh, uh, we can support our customers also taking care of all IT needs uh, like monitoring, updates, etc., and uh, different requests that he has. So uh, he can focus on his core business. And uh, then I would like to share with you some uh, real cases that we are having. So uh, with private cloud, uh, here, uh, one very interesting case of uh, BoxPerry, it's logistic service of delivery. They started in 2010. And uh, for them, it's really very important uh, reliability and speed uh, of the service. Uh, so uh, in the very beginning, uh, they were basing uh, their growth, their business development on IT. Uh, infrastructure and digital transformation. And uh, starting from delivery to corporate customers, then with residential customers, now they're doing delivery for different marketplaces and online stores uh, into more than 200 customers. And uh, uh, with this rapid growth, uh, they were faced with some technical issues. Their ERP and warehouse management systems uh, since the very beginning were in cloud environment. And, uh, uh, but technologically, these kind of solutions are quite, uh, uh, they consume uh, computing resources and memory uh, in a very uh, demanding way, I would say. So, uh, and constant growth of this uh, infrastructure uh, actually um, created the problem. So it was like, uh, uh, quite became quite critical. And they made an audit and find out that architecture of the solution themselves, so like a financial system and a, a warehouse system, they are quite uh, good. Uh, they are optimized. And the problem is in uh, CPU over subscription. So the solution was to migrate to dedicated cloud environment. Uh, so they started with some host for SQL server, some host for virtualization. And we uh, were able to do all this migration just in seven days for uh, all uh, systems. Of course, they still maintain and resolve platform and uh, public cloud, also some solutions uh, in uh, other uh, points. 
um, and uh, it is like hybrid solution finally, but uh, really the private cloud approach help them to resolve a uh, business uh, issue. Uh, so at the moment as a business result, so they have guaranteed time for uh, process processes of uh, distribution and delivery. Uh, I mean, um, the time from IT support, from IT infrastructure. Also, uh, they are able using private cloud environment to do performance testing before different marketing campaigns or some specific uh, weeks of uh, uh, huge load, like uh, some festivities or uh, some special days when a lot of people send uh, a lot of uh, gifts to their uh, friends uh, using uh, delivery service, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, and uh, actually, if you work in public uh, cloud, uh, this kind of test will not give you any reasonable uh, result because when your neighbors in the same time in public cloud do um, similar activities, uh, you will use the same computing resources, the same CPU and memory in only private cloud can uh, deliver you the guaranteed uh, volume of resources. And uh, in general, so the business risk of uh, uh, using IT resources were significantly decreased because uh, with private cloud, you have uh, dedicated resources and uh, guaranteed time of uh, processing your requests. Um, another case, it's a leasing company for railways, mining uh, industry and other types of heavy manufacturing. So the case was that a um, new team of uh, IT specialists came and they made an audit of the infrastructure and uh, find out uh, that uh, the IT equipment in general uh, is uh, a little bit old. So some of the components do not have uh, support end of life. Some of equipment uh, already do not have guarantee, etc. And uh, they made analysis if they purchase equipment or they are renting equipment. But the uh, nature of the company, leasing company, uh, usually they don't want to freeze money because the core business is financial services. And based on this analysis, the solution was private cloud because private cloud can make them the same as uh, uh, new purchased equipment, but quickly. And also they don't need to uh, uh, invest in this so they can uh, do this kind of uh, rent. So all main services at the moment are hosted in a private cloud environment. Um, and uh, another important point was that uh, according to some regulations, since this is financial organization because leasing is financial operation, uh, the dedicated infrastructure is required. Uh, that is why it also was, was one of the important points to comply with. So uh, new projects already launched, personal area for partners also in uh, uh, private environment and VDI solution for uh, users, uh, for the employees. So business result is a, a real reliability of internal IT solutions to services, quick uh, deployment, rapid deployment and flexible uh, scaling of the solution and also very important for financial organization instead of capex uh, instead of capital expenses they have now opex operational expenses and from the financial perspective it's really more uh, efficient way of uh, using their resources and uh, another startup uh, another project so it's a, a interesting startup uh, 15 minutes delivery service in big cities, a uh, service that is already working in 32 cities of Russia, in uh, New York, and some cities in Europe. The idea that um, uh, if you need some food or some items from grocery store, you can uh, ask delivery and using bicycles or electric scooters, since uh, in the big cities, the delivery by car, it can be an issue because of traffic. 
with uh, bicycles or electric scooters, you can do it faster. And the service is like in 15 minutes, you can receive any item from the store. And also it's of course became more popular during this uh, pandemic uh, period. And uh, uh, the company grow uh, a lot. Last years, it's, it was like incredible growth. And uh, uh, it's this growth actually caused some issues. Uh, so initially the IT infrastructure was uh, uh, under the model of hosting uh, with uh, uh, internal IT management. So they uh, did the manage, uh, management of all IT resources by themselves. Uh, but also it was uh, like due to the growth, they were like using different solutions because they just had to satisfy this growth it's to, to support this growth and satisfy the requirement of the core business. And uh, in one moment, they came to the conclusion that now they need reliability, fault tolerance and high availability of services. So they need to move to enterprise level hardware and software with dedicated storage, uh, work in reliable data centers, because you know, when you have only 15 minutes to deliver, all your systems, all your processes should work smooth, as smooth as possible. And um, then they were like, there was a question for them, public cloud or dedicated solution. And uh, they came to the conclusion, so the only dedicated solution can work uh, uh, for them. Um, so uh, they choose uh, itglobal.com because of uh, IT infrastructure we are providing. We uh, have our equipment in best commercial data centers in continental Europe. Uh, we started uh, with the equipment trend and then we migrated to private cloud. So during these projects, we, uh, the customers saw that from the business perspective, uh, it is more efficient uh, use private cloud approach than just regular hosting. And uh, we expect, so we hope that we will maintain this strong partnership to grow together worldwide for other locations because uh, a company is growing in uh, other countries as well. And uh, we also grow in our IT infrastructure and we can uh, go together in on this location to help them to uh, develop their services uh, in uh, application, in testing, in production, uh, in other environments. So uh, as we usually do for uh, these webinars, there were three cases. And uh, here I would continue with uh, some ideas of uh, uh, like um, our proposal of IT Global, uh, we call it Elastic Private Cloud. Um, that's what we are doing with uh, Flexpot technology. And we consider that it's even better than on-premise equipment. So if for some reasons you expect at the moment delivery of equipment or you are thinking it over to purchase new equipment, uh, you can try to reconsider it and go to private cloud with us. Uh, we actually do uh, the minimum rental period with us starts from three months. So you don't need to uh, like consider that we will uh, force you to sign with us for two years, three years, etc. So we have already the equipment installed in place and uh, actually the minimum uh, period, it depends on the requirements uh, of the customer and uh, it can be a really quite uh, small, even uh, comparing to the delivery time that we have now in the market, it can be a reasonable proposal for you to wait until, uh, uh, like to use our service until the moment the equipment will come. Uh, also, we uh, will configure 100% uh, uh, ready infrastructure in uh, less than a week. So if you uh, need it immediately, we can do it immediately. And uh, you cannot do this with on-premise equipment, never. Um, also, of course, you will help with the setup and uh, migration according to your infrastructure. Uh, also, we have an option of very smooth scaling. So actually you can grow uh, only by uh, 256 uh, uh, gigabytes of memory. It's also uh, kind of uh, advanced option of our private cloud from IT Global. And uh, in, of course, all our in 
entire infrastructure is redundant by default. So you really uh, can have the uh, enterprise level solution uh, with uh, totally dedicated infrastructure uh, with the flexibility or almost with the flexibility of public cloud. And of course, if you have some very special complicated case, we can support you with IT design and uh, we can provide you with the managed IT service. Uh, actually, we consider that each customer is unique. Uh, each customer has its own uh, special needs and requirements, his, its history and its infrastructure. That is why we need to deliver also unique customized solution and private cloud. Actually, it's one of the uh, really efficient tool uh, to do that. So uh, if you were able to uh, watch our webinar to listen until this moment, you can use uh, promo code ITG private cloud uh, one to get uh, one month of free public or private cloud service. Uh, so please contact this uh, promo code will work uh, like first uh, three or four months of the next year. So just contact us and uh, when we uh, make the contract, just remember this promo code and we, we will give you this uh, like special trial period. Um, I think that is all for today. So we discussed uh, uh, private cloud uh, benefits uh, and uh, uh, based on the current situation with the global chip shortage, uh, if you need uh, immediately or quite quickly implement your uh, IT solution and you need uh, IT infrastructure to do that uh, with some special requirements for uh, computing resources or uh, storage resources and uh, you don't want to wait or you don't have this uh, option to wait maybe. So we can uh, provide you very reliable, efficient and uh, even cost efficient solution uh, with private cloud. So please, if you have any questions, I don't know, Julia, maybe somebody gave us a question. So please. Hi, yes, we, hello. We have a few questions from David and he's asking if, uh, if he needs a small dedicated server with eight CPU and 128 RAM to start, can the solution be a private cloud or should he look for other options? Well, it depends on, on, on the task. Uh, so actually, uh, if you say this uh, solution, probably you can use like public cloud approach, uh, but it depends on uh, how you're going to use it. Uh, you should remember that if we're talking about private cloud, uh, as I mentioned, so you will receive a cluster uh, and uh, instead of one server, you will at least receive two servers. So it's always N plus one. Uh, so it means that it's quite uh, expensive solution. And uh, uh, if you need only uh, eight cores, probably for this particular moment, uh, it's easier to work with uh, a public cloud environment and then grow to private cloud when you have more uh, demand uh, for the services because with VMware we can easily uh, migrate the service from uh, one environment to uh, another environment from public to cloud then. But anyway, so please contact us. We will try to understand your case and uh, we'll get back with the proposal. We have one more question from Stephanie and she's asking how expensive is private cloud compared to public cloud? Well, in general terms, uh, as uh, probably you uh, saw in the presentation, the private cloud environment is like dedicated solution. That's why from uh, like general perspective, it's more expensive, but um, we made the uh, like comprising of uh, different types of private cloud. And there is a certain level of uh, the resources when uh, private cloud 
uh, have the same price as the public cloud and sometimes even less. Uh, because when we uh, have like dedicated, uh, uh, special dedicated solution, uh, we can design it, to, it, it, it's relatively big solution. So we design it in a way um, uh, that um, like from the very beginning uh, is not, uh, is, is quite economically efficient. So uh, that's why when we uh, achieve kind of uh, volume of resources, uh, the growth in private cloud costs less than the growth in uh, public cloud. And that is why it depends on your uh, particular requirement. So uh, if we're talking about like small servers, as I mentioned in the answer in previous question, uh, if uh, we have uh, like one server for private cloud, we will have to give you two servers at least just to have this redundancy because these are dedicated resources. It means that it probably will be quite expensive. But when you start growing, uh, so you need N plus one. So if you have, for example, five servers, it means that we will give you six. Um, and uh, uh, also uh, when you need more resources, so the pricing is more attractive. That is why if you want to have your the answer in numbers or in percentage, so probably contact us with uh, some more particular data, uh, what kind of infrastructure uh, we are talking about and uh, we can prepare you both options public cloud and private cloud and you will see the difference thank you alec and thank you everyone who attended the webinar about best practices to resolve business challenges with it global today don't forget to use your coupon that uh, Alex showed earlier, or you can rewatch the recording of this webinar later in our YouTube channels. Please follow our social media and uh, contact us if you have any questions by using uh, info at itglobal.com. Yes, please. So uh, also you can join you can uh, join us in all our uh, like social medias uh, to follow all the news, all their uh, ideas we are sharing. Uh, as well, please contact by email, uh, mobile, telephone, whatever. Uh, there are the emails of uh, sales department, also technical support if you have some technical questions. And um, for general uh, questions also, please feel free to contact anytime. Okay, I think uh, uh, if there's no questions, so thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Julia. Uh, thank you for all the uh, participants today. Uh, hope to see you on uh, next webinars we're having. Thank you. Have a good day.